Hello there. Hope everyone is doing well. I want to have a little bit of a discussion about morals and how morals are not enough. And um, this is most certainly, I know a lot of people may wonder why I tag preparedness or prepping in the title. This is most certainly uh, a matter of, of prepping and preparedness because it's important now and after some major event, some SHTF, uh, for this discussion to be heard. So what do I mean by uh, morals are not enough? They're not. I've known a lot of good people throughout my lifetime that have a lot of good morals. And in fact, it's a prerequisite if you want to be a friend of mine. I'll tell you that right now. Um, that's the one thing. I, I have walked away from more quote-unquote friends uh, than most people could ever realize because they lacked true morals. And I've walked away from even more people for something that they lack that's just as important and actually more important than the morals. And that's integrity. Uh, there's a host of people here uh, locally that I, whether I went to school with them or somehow met up with them some other way there's a host of people that uh, sorry trying to get my my cigarette lit and over the course of time parted ways why because even though they had the morals to get their foot in the door with me, they didn't have the integrity. What do I mean? Well, because see, oftentimes people's morals are limited and restricted. It's dependent upon who it is that that moral is being invoked for, right? A lot of people, speaking of friends, a lot of people will let friends slide when it comes to morals. A lot of people. And that's not something that I can do. That's just something I can't do. I never have been able to do that. I'm the kind of person that I expect people to be true from one end of the spectrum to another. You know, don't change, don't flip things up just because of who it is. That, that to me, a lack of integrity is disgusting. And it's kind of humorous because, especially here locally, I've always kind of been, I'm just going to say it, I've kind of been looked at as a scumbag, to be honest, right? I mean, it is what it is. I certainly never have set out to impress people. I never have, um, I, I didn't, I didn't yearn for people's acceptance or, you know, people's accolades and all of that. It's not something I've ever been after. It's not something I'll ever be after. Why? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people don't have the integrity, right? And so why would I want to be more like people that I despise? It doesn't make sense to me. A lot of things don't make sense to me. But I come bearing fruit. I'm not going to come here and talk to you about something involving philosophy of life and not bring a real world, real life example and fruit. So, just recently, we had a situation of vow and another thing, I'll, I'll plug this real quick for folks and this is definitely associated with preparedness and prepping. I urge you, especially if you live in a small community like we have here, and we're not super small, we're right out around 10,000 people, so it's not like we're some little bitty tiny town. But um, we're not huge either. In my opinion, we're a great size. And uh, one of the best ways to get engaged with that community is through social media. And uh, years ago, three years ago roughly, I started a Facebook group. I was raised on the mindset, if you see a need, fill it. And there was a need 
definite need in this town uh, for a Facebook group that didn't cater to one political party or the other and uh, just somebody that that could run and operate the group that believed in in free speech in actual free speech the uh, <laughs> the bright dog here is uh, chasing around yellow jackets I've got a bunch of them buzzing around the yard for some reason <laughs> They're going to learn her. They're going to learn her. <laughs> so if you hear a bunch of yiping going on, <laughs> you know what happened. So anyway, back to, uh, back to the groups. So if you don't have a local group, uh, I highly recommend you start one. If you do have a local group where people are allowed to speak freely and openly, then I would most certainly start just planting preparedness seeds any and not going out of your way don't don't go looking like the crazy person like me um, but just plant seeds here and there on preparedness um, otherwise start a group you see you need fill it so three years ago I did that very thing and it is proven to have turned out well I don't censor in there in three years time there is only two posts two posts that I ever gotten rid of other than duct clean we get a ton of air duct cleaning posts or you know furnace duct cleaning whatever and those actually we have a rule against it in our group because uh, from from what I've seen uh, from other people's interactions those are a lot of fly-by-night businesses and there's a lot of people that get t taken essentially so we just don't allow them we don't allow the duck cleaning post but aside from that in three years there's only two posts that I've ever taken down I've only banned two people that aside from people that post scams or you know, duck cleaning um, but for what they did themselves two people that's it in three years um, why integrity you know I mean I said what I said, right? There's a lot of people that want to quote, quote scripture out of the Bible. They want to take that little bitty verse, you know? Um, By your fruits you shall know them. Well, I'm giving examples of that. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. I'm giving examples of that. There's a lot of people that talk a good game, but in reality, they're not living a good game. And that's where the integrity comes in that's where the integrity is ultimately important so um this craziness we had a deal come up let, well the ones let me explain let me explain the two posts real quick um, one of the posts that I had gotten rid of was a young man that was in an argument with his family and um, he said some rather uh, unsatisfactory things about his father. And um, I, I can't, I, I know the guy, I went to school with the guy, not the one that made the post, but the father. And the content of that, uh, of that post, I, I don't doubt. It just it is what it is. I don't doubt the validity of the content of that post. However, there's a place and a time, and there's also, um, there's a lot of wisdom in refraining, okay, and this would have caused so many issues for everyone involved, right, and possibly even myself, um, because I am the founder of the group, I am the admin of the group, so... Could legal implications have came my way? Yeah. Legal threats could have been made, but that would have been about as far um, as it could have gone because it is what it is, right? Um, so no, I wasn't so much worried about that end of it, but I didn't want the, the BS from it either. So I didn't just nix the post. I nixed the post and then I, I messaged the young man who made the post 
and I engaged him and I had a conversation with him. And I truly, firmly believe that at the end of that conversation, he was in a much better frame of mind and hopefully had a little bit of a better idea of what direction he wanted to go. I didn't tell him what direction to go. It's not my job to do. I'm not, I'm not going to tell him what to do. Howdy, kid. You might want to watch those yellow jackets because they're, you know, they'll sneak on your nose and you'll be yip, yip, yip all around the yard. So anyway, <laughs> she's such an awesome girl. She is the best dog you could ever ask for. So, um, that was one of the posts. Uh, and the other post, let's see. The other post had to do with um, advertising in a nearby town, not here, but in a nearby town, uh, there was going to be one of those drag queen, I don't know, if, I think it was a story hour, a drag queen, queen story hour thingy uh, in a nearby town. And <clears throat> I'm all about free speech, and I am... As much of a free speech absolutist as what you'll find, but I ain't letting that happen on my watch. No. And you can call me a hypocrite for that all you want. I'm good with that. Why? Morals and integrity, right? Um, because that, me getting rid of that post, was absolute morals and integrity. Uh, morals because, no, I ain't having that. I ain't having that. Integrity, because I'm not a damn bit afraid of the backlash from doing so. One of the people banned it was one of the hosts, I think a, uh, he, he was a host of the event or an organizer of the event or something like that. And he kept trying to push his luck. And the other person that was banned was somebody that was warned and kept pressing her luck. What are you going to do, right? Um, free speech is one thing. Repeatedly, especially an admin, you know, especially an admin that does everything they can to be fair. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea to push them, you know. And again, I'm not a ban happy person. Two people, three years. Two posts, three years. So recently, we had an incident come up. And man, man. I don't want to say young man because I don't know his age, but um, kind of a high-pitched voice. I don't think he was young, but I don't think he's very old either. I got the impression he might have been very something else, but I'll leave that alone. So, he made a post calling out a local plumber because this plumber didn't do the job uh, according to their likelihood, if you will, and, alright, apparently the toilet got broken in the process, and stuff like that happened, I don't know what, but I mean, he posted a video of his interaction of himself and this plumber, and he was a complete jackass. And not only a jackass, but a complete ignorant jackass. And I've worked in the service industry. I did pest control for three and a half years. And in the service industry, it is at, at the very minimum 50-50, right? You got to be a decent customer and you got to be a decent serviceman. And I, you know, I can't speak to the servicemen's side of things uh, because you really didn't get to hear the servicemen speak other than trying to use common and use reasoning and common sense to talk to the customer the customer was a complete jackass they posted this video and well it didn't take long and there were a bunch of people that were calling this person out and they posted anonymously and stuff like that although the admins can see who it is and they called it out. Well, I was one of them that called it out. I normally stay out of stuff, but this was that bad. And so dude deleted the, the video. 
but turned around and posted a series of pictures talking all kinds of smack about the servicemen. And because of the previous post, I really don't have a lot of trust in this person at all to tell the story accurately, correctly, fairly. And um, we're going to get to the meat of it in just a second. And so he wound up deleting that second post that had the pictures because people continued to call him out. See, that's the part about free speech, right? You don't protect, and I say this in the group time and time again, I am not. I am not going to protect one side over the other. And I'm not. Fact, not going to protect one side over the other. It seems like, it seems like the left wants you to put a covering over them of protection, be their armor, while they do anything to the right. They can say anything to the right, they can name call, they can be as disgusting and vile and crude, but all... All the right has to do is, like, mention a fact or something, and they're the most horrible sons of bitches on the planet. And I see this. I'm not partisan, but I'm not stupid, and I'm not foolish either. And so, anywho, that post the guy deleted. Well, somebody in the group um, screenshotted it and reposted it. Okay. Fair game. And here's here's where we get to the meat of the topic here. The fruit, if you will. I'm not going to name names or anything like that. This ain't about that. But I had somebody who I consider a friend, and I'm just, in order to not identify him, I'm them, I am going to leave it at that. Uh, I do consider this person as a friend. However, uh, they contacted me, and one of the individuals involved, and I really don't even know the whole story yet or anything like that, I really don't care. Um, one of the individuals that was involved one way or another with the content of what was being posted, apparently, their wife was upset and wanted, you know, didn't want to see the post. So this person came to me and asked me if I would remove it. And I'm going to be honest, I was pissed. <laughs> I'm still not happy. I was pissed. You know, the last thing you want to do with somebody that truly has integrity is ask them to go back on that integrity as a favor for a friend. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's just as disgusting as not having integrity to begin with. So, yeah, I was pissed. And obviously, my answer is like, uh, no. If it was, you know, if it was something that deemed it it would be considered. This was not something that there was even needed to be a consideration for, right? I'm wondering if those are cicadas flying all around. I don't know if they're getting in front of the camera at all. But there wasn't even going to be a consideration for this. And, and it kept up a little bit trying to, and it's like, no. And it's like, for one, I see this in a totally different way. I see this as a warning. This post as a warning. Warning to who, you might ask. Companies? You know, there's nothing like somebody blacklisting themselves. <laughs> right? Um, because believe me, there are lists, right? There's landlord lists, there's all kinds of different lists out there where people are, are essentially blacklisted because of their actions. And that's why I feel 
like that was important that it remained in place because then you've got other individuals that are in the area, other local individuals that will see that and see how they act, see how they speak and all that and will think twice before, you know, taking up their, their uh, whatever type of job they have. I know I would. Uh, again, I did service work. I did pest control three and a half years and I did have a couple of incidents in that time. Um to where things were claimed or whatnot, and my boss, he was a great guy. Um, he worked in intelligence, and uh, he was very <laughs> intelligent. I don't think he worked on like any low levels of intelligence, right? I don't think like he was your regular intelligence speller. I think he was a little higher up than that. In fact, I know he was, but I'm not gonna go into that any deeper. He's gone now, rest in peace, but still, I'm not gonna, not gonna out the guy for things he can confided in me with. But he told me flat out, he's like, look, he goes, if I'd have thought you were that type of person, I wouldn't have hired you. So, uh, one time there was a theft, and uh, there was, I know there was cash stolen, there was a... Uh, class ring, a golden class ring that was stolen. Um, and it, I think, I mean, we're talking, this was a long time ago. What, two decades ago? <laughs> um, there was, um, yeah, a little over two decades. Damn, damn. Um, there were a couple other things. I can't remember what the couple other things were off the top of my head. But there was cash. I don't remember the amount. And I do remember a golden class ring. And uh, this wasn't a guy that, okay, I did monthly accounts. And so 99.9% .9 of the work I did was monthly accounts. But uh, on the odd chance, once in a while, for whatever reason, Rick would throw me another job that was either like, I don't want to say a one-off, but it wasn't going to be a monthly thing, you know. Um or, of course, he might have me pick up something else, or, you know, pick up uh, somebody else's uh, account that they couldn't get for whatever reason. But um, this was what I'm going to call a one-off. Um, it wasn't just one visit. It was going to be a few of them. But. And uh, so I finished the job, and I left and all of that. And... Um... Yeah, I went on about my day. Next day, same thing, went and did my job. And when I came in to the office to hand in my paperwork and, and get my route book for the next day, Rick called me into the office. And he goes, hey, so you know? He goes, you're probably gonna be questioned by the police. Okay, what's up? And he explained to me that the account that I had did, uh, the guy called up and he's missing stuff. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, I gotta ask. He goes, I gotta ask. I already know the answer, but did you take it? And I'm like, no. And he goes, I wouldn't have, you know, once again, he said, I wouldn't have hired you if I, would, if I thought you were that way. He goes, but I have to ask. No. I said, uh, Rick, I said, what sense does that make? I said, you know, I don't make a fortune. I said, but it's a guaranteed paycheck every week. That's not. <laughs> and uh, he goes, I know. And he goes, I know you're not that dumb. So, things like that happen. And absolutely, um, Rick had called him back. And uh, not right then. Um, did the police? I don't even think the no police never did even question me. I never even was questioned by the police. And like a couple of days or so later, I was there when Rick made the call. Rick called him uh, because he had more visits that he was due, and Rick called him to cancel them and say that we won't be back out. And I mean, then he proceeded to just absolutely eat the guy alive. 
And I mean, you know, don't you ever accuse. You know, I mean, it, it was nasty. <laughs> and, uh, and I really wish that this, this plumber, the, the guy that either owns or runs it, would have, would have done the same. I don't think they have. Can't say they have or they haven't, but I really hope that they'll find the testicular fortitude, the morals and the integrity to, uh, to do that. Because people like that need put in their place. But more to why I'm here to talk to you about this. You know, don't back away from that. Probably the majority, the large majority of my quote-unquote enemies are enemies because of my morals, because of my integrity. There's a lot of people that can't handle that. And I've been that way my entire life. There's a lot of things growing up and going through high school. If I thought it was stupid, I wouldn't take part in it. Plain and simple. There were a couple of little games, and, and I jokingly said uh, a couple, two, three weeks ago or something like that, that um, some of my friends were the Tide Pod, Tide Pod Eaters of the 90s. And indeed they were. There were some things, a few things that I can think of, little games that they played that quote-unquote proved how tough you were, right? One of them was taking a Bic lighter, getting it nice and hot, the, the metal top on a Bic lighter, getting it nice and hot, and then sticking it on your arm, whoever could hold it on their arm the longest won, won, right? Won the Tide Pot Eating Contest. And the same was true for a cigarette itself, taking a lit cigarette and putting it on your wrist and just, you know. And there had been several times that they tried to get me to play that stupid shit and I wouldn't take part in it. But, moreover, um, there was another one, that, another little game they played too. It's not your buddy. UPS truck went by. and um, the, One of the UPS drivers is, is one of Blue's buddies. So, but anyway, um, another one was taking a comb, I think they smacked the comb on the knuckles or something like that, and of course, whoever could, whoever, you know, didn't want any more, thank you sir, may I have another, um, lost. It's stupid shit, that doesn't prove how tough you are, it proves how ignorant you are. And I knew this as a teenager, right? But I was a bad guy, I was a pussy, I was this, I was that, right? I was an outcast because I didn't give in to that peer pressure to do something really freaking ignorant. And so I've made a lot of enemies in life that way. And it, it continued on to the internet. Look, look at today. Look how many people can't stand me on YouTube. Why is that? Break it down, go to the root of that. Why is that? Because they're bullshit and I expect them to do better if they're trying to play leader on, on the internet, on social media? I mean, you've got people out there scamming like you wouldn't believe. You've got people out there lying like they wouldn't believe. you got people out there that wouldn't care if they spent your last dime as long as they could make that commission from it. And I'm going to call that out because it goes against my morals. And furthermore, I'm not going to back off my integrity. Morals are one thing, but if you don't have the integrity to back it up, there ain't much point in having the morals. And morals aren't something that you should be changing dependent upon who it is, right? There's so much of that, especially in politics, that happens. And that's why I can't be a partisan person, because both sides are bullshit. Both sides are liars. Both sides are hypocrites. I, I, lesser of two evils? No. 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 The good book warned about that. No. Nope. I'm not going to make that choice. You give me a choice without evil, or at least without that level of evil, and it'll be considered. But until then, mm -mm. no. No, thank you. 
I don't care if I stand on that hill alone. When I take my last breath, and when I go to see the Father, that is when I care about being judged. A man, by my peers around here, by the so-called peers on YouTube, Which brings up another bit of scripture about serving one master. I don't know what to tell people. But if you're pandering to people, if you're skewing your topics a little bit, or anything like that. <laughs> Good book also talks about being lukewarm. But it all comes back to that integrity, you see? Because that what is what makes the difference as to whether or not they pass or fail those tests. That one thing. Integrity. Work on integrity. It's ultimately important now and after any any type of major event. It's gonna be monumental. You know, I might get laughed at, mocked, ridiculed for my integrity today. But after some major event, people are going to be looking for somebody they can rely on. Build that foundation today. You might look like a jackass today because of your integrity. But when that time comes and when those tables turn, people are going to be looking for you. Be that person. Shalom.